Hey everyone, this is Ross, and we're rooting some fig cuttings this winter. Um, all for you guys, for the most part. And I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of how we're doing this. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the lighting system and the environment I have these cuttings in and what my plans are for this entire closet. I think closets are nice because they're pretty stable environments, and that's the key to this video. You need a stable environment. You need to have a humidity that is stable, and you need to have a temperature that is over 70 degrees, preferably 75 or 80 degrees. The warmer the temperatures, guys, you can see I've got a thermometer in here that also tracks the humidity. The better the humidity, guys, I'm sorry, the higher the temperature, the more heat that these guys will have, the faster their metabolisms can go. It's the same thing with our outdoor potted fig trees. They do phenomenally better with more heat. And the same thing with the rooting process. We need to have ample heat, we need to have ample humidity. The humidity though is coming from the soil moisture. The bottom of the cutting that is buried in the soil, hopefully the soil is moist and has is providing ample humidity. By tamping down the soil a bit, we can ensure that the cutting is in contact with a lot of the soil. Smaller particles of your soil will also provide better humidity. Now, above the above the cutting here, the stuff that's sticking up out of the soil that also needs a certain level of humidity for that to send out leaves and new stems that's what the parafilm here is for once it breaks through the parafilm it'll automatically be, uh, be adjusted to the room humidity which I know right now it's about 47 to uh, 47 percent but in the winter time and pretty soon we're about to turn on the heater here in this house because it gets quite cold outside and the humidity in this closet will drop probably to 20 to 30 percent and it will remain there for the entire winter. So that's very important. We have a stable environment of the temperature, we have a stable environment of the humidity. If you cannot find a stable environment, I suggest you come up with some really proactive ideas. One, for adding a little bit of heat, you can't get to 75 degrees or even 80 degrees, add a heat mat. Um, I also have overhead lights here, and this is very key. We're going to talk about the lights in just a moment. These lights provide heat, so that's also making this warm, this room a bit warmer. Um, and also having them in a location of your house that maybe be a bit warmer, like uh, upstairs because heat rises. A place that's insulated well. And that's the key. To doing this in your house. Now you can do this in a greenhouse setting with misters, you can do this uh, in a controlled greenhouse with temperature, humidity, all of that. But this is a great way to do this in your house. Um, now the last thing you're going to need is the lights and you can see here I'm using fluorescent light bulbs. I think these are T8s. Um, I can't remember if it's T T8s or T12s that are the thinner bulb, but the the thinner bulbs, the upgraded newer model of this is a more efficient bulb. Same thing with LEDs. But I'm using a less efficient bulb and I'm also using uh, fluorescence. Now with fluorescence, you have to have a pretty decent spectrum. You want a, a low spectrum and you want a higher spectrum. So, you know, same thing with LEDs, you want something that's like you know, 21, uh, 2100 K, which is the color temperature. You can find that on the, the bulb, the box of the bulb, and they'll put out different colors of light. Um, you can also find a bulb that's higher on the spectrum that puts out another different spectrum of light. And between the two, a high and a low spectrum, you're covering a lot of colors of light that then uh, pretty much cover the full spectrum of light that the sun provides. For me, I'm using something in the middle of the spectrum, which includes a lot of different colors of light. And that way I don't need 
different colors of bulb and it doesn't look like I'm growing pot in my closet. So that's basically it guys. Um, the last thing I'll mention about the lights is that we want to have them pretty close to the leaves, not touching the leaves, but the ideal range, and I can adjust this. I purposely put these shop lights here, which is a very affordable way to do this, is to get some four foot shop lights, and I put them on a bit of a pulley system here. And I can just pull this down, and this will then adjust to any height that I choose. And then that way, when my cuttings are going here, guys, um, I can always have that light close to the plants. That way they're getting enough through photosynthesis that way. All right, that is the rooting environment that I've, I've selected, and it's a pretty good one for someone in a home setting. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this one. I'll catch you all next time. We're going to come at you guys in a few months from now probably to show you guys the problems that I've been having um, and the progress that these guys have been showing. So good luck. Don't go too crazy getting too many varieties. It really is a lot of work. I'll see you all next time. Take care.